On this episode of Geek Dad Life, we're going to review the new Masters of the Universe Origins Evil Lynn figure by Mattel. Hey everybody and welcome to Geek Dad Life. It's your host, Jay Glaffelter here. For the first time since the early 2000s, there's new Masters of the Universe action figures hitting retailers across the US as well as being shipped in the United Kingdom. We have already reviewed He-Man, Skeletor, Beast-Man, Tila, Man-at-Arms, and Battle Cat on this channel. And the last figure from the first wave of six is Evelyn, and we will be reviewing her today. After that, it only leaves the Sky Sled and Prince Adam 2-pack, which we will be reviewing next. So be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and click on that bell icon to be notified when the latest episode of Geek Dad Life drops. Evil Lynn is the first non-8-back Masters of the Universe character to be featured in the Masters of the Universe Origins line. I'm glad they pulled her up in the release to be a part of this first wave of Masters of the Universe Origins figures. She is one of Skeletor's most important allies, being one of the most intelligent of the evil warriors, as well as one of the most powerful. She made her first mini comics appearance in the Mask of Power, even though it was really only a cameo on the first page. She was only in six mini comics matching her figure appearance, which is that really bright yellow with the two-tone blue headdress and dress. She was far more utilized in the Filmation series as well as the early 2000s Mike Young production series. That Evil Lynn deferred greatly from the vintage figure. Instead of the bright yellow skin, she had a gray tone as well as more of a purple and blue combination for her attire. So this figure is all vintage toy influence, no other really features from any of the other media appearances of Evil Lynn. I'm okay with that though, because I really love the color scheme of the vintage figure. It really stands out on a shelf, especially when she's paired with the other evil warriors. Looking at the packaging, it's the same as the previous five figures with that retro style card back, but we have the addition of the new for 20 in the left-hand corner, six plus in the right, and that modern posing retro play burst right above the bubble. On the back, we have some awesome new artwork, just like the other figures. And I really like this Evil Lynn one. A lot of just great colors. She has her kind of crystal ball staff. Uh, just It looks really, really cool. Love, love, love this Evil Lynn artwork. It's probably up there as one of my favorites from the first figures in this line. Just like the other figures in this wave, we have the cross sell artwork for the first six figures, as well as two square illustrations showing you how you can fit her crystal ball accessory into her hand, as well as twist this figure into powerful positions. Taking the figure out of the box, she comes in at about, about five and a half inches, just like the Tila figure. Just like the Tila figure, this one comes in a little bit shorter than her vintage counterpart and a lot of bit shorter than the male figures in this series. Just like all the other humanoid figures in this line, she has 16 points of articulation. And unlike my Tila figure, all of her articulating points were great. None of the fused elbow joints that I had on my Tila. Looking at the sculpting on this figure, I'd say it's pretty comparable to the Tila figure, given that it's using the same tooling from the neck down. The other thing I think it matches Tila well is in the head sculpt. I really like what they did with the head sculpt here. A lot of nice detail, but unlike the Tila, I think the really bright yellow plastic they use, it kind of, the sculpting gets lost and some of the, the detail gets lost with the yellow coloring. That's especially true when trying to capture this figure on video. In person, the detail comes out more, but even still, uh, it is one of the drawbacks to the very neon bright yellow, even highlighter yellow of this figure. I'm not complaining about that though. I do really like the, the vibrancy of the colors here and really all of the plastic colors that they use uh, on in this line so far. I think it looks really, really good. After I posted my Tila review, there was a lot of comments on the knee joints of the figure. Now, I know for some it looks kind of off and they don't like it, but for me, I don't mind it. Like again, when I'm looking at it on the shelf, you know, doing knee joints is always really hard on like bare skinned uh, figures. So really there's open arms or kind of open legs. It is always a lot tougher to kind of conceal those joints versus if, you know, it's wearing pants, cargo pants or really anything that could probably hide those joints. So what I like about these knee joints is it really does 
hide any of the pins uh, or any of the articulating points that you might see on the front of the knees. Now again, it's probably your own preference, your own kind of taster's choice here, but I like what they did here with the knee joints. It's similar to the male figures, but maybe just a little bit more prominent on these female bucks. But overall, I actually really like the knee joints, but I respect if they're not for you. Evil Lynn is packaged with the fewest amount of accessories for any of the Origins figures so far. It's not necessarily her fault as the vintage figure only came with her kind of crystal ball staff accessory and nothing more. Now, again, could there have been some other things that could have thrown in to maybe kind of bring it more on par with the other figures in the line? Yes, I think they could have. But it, at no point do I feel like this figure is lacking because again, you know, that's her main accessory. It's her most iconic accessory and we have that. Now, when comparing it to the vintage staff, it's similar to all of the other Origins accessories compared to the vintage counterparts. It's thicker, mainly because it's a different hand joint where the original Evil Lynn and Tila molds had kind of a closed hand with just a little hole in it that the, the staffs would go through. Uh, these female figures have full hands that, you know, will require a larger accessory to put them in just like the male figures as well. Now, the one problem with all of these accessories being bigger is that I'm finding over time, it's almost stretching out the hands and it's becoming more and more difficult to hold the accessory. I personally haven't run into any major issues yet, but it is something to be aware of. Going side by side with a vintage Evil Lynn, you can see how closely they stuck to that vintage figure. All of the paint applications are the same. Now again, my vintage Evil Lynn has probably aged and lost some of its color, but even still it also follows the rest of the Origins figures of being brighter colors than the vintage counterpart. I also really love the updated head sculpts here. I think it's an improvement on the vintage where you can maybe argue that the He-Man uh, is not not better than the vintage. I think you can easily say that this Evil Lynn's head sculpt is way better than the vintage Evil Lynn head sculpt, as well as the headdress. A lot more detail on the headdress versus the vintage Evil Lynn. The other benefit of these new female molds is that uh, they stand up a lot better than the vintage counterparts. Now in my display, I have both Evil Lynn and Tila riding Battle Cat and Panthor respectively basically solving for the problem of them always falling over if they're standing up on their own. But I do love that the Origins has really significantly improved the way the female characters are able to stand up on their own. While Evil Lynn has the fewest accessories out of any Origins figure, I still think this one easily gets the Geek Dad Life buy rating, mainly because I really like the improved articulation here. I know some people don't like the knee joints, but I don't mind them. I think the figure looks really good in hand, and I also really like the improved head sculpt as well as the headdress that goes along with that head sculpt. It's a night and day difference from the vintage counterpart, and I think it really shows well when you're matching it with the other Masters of the Universe Origins figure. Years. Next up, we will be reviewing the Prince Adam and Sky Sled 2 pack. I was lucky enough to be able to find one on my toy hunting this weekend in Raleigh, North Carolina. So be sure to subscribe and click on that bell icon to be notified when that episode drops. And then definitely check out all of my other Masters of the Universe Origins reviews. I have a playlist right here that you can click on to see all of those. And until then, hasta luego and goodbye.